Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, we are STEP, Short Term Educational Programme, um, and our session this afternoon um, really gives of what we've learned um, during the challenges of the last few months um, where we've moved you know what's primarily a face-to-face -face service um, completely online um, first of all I just want to introduce myself um, and my colleagues um, I'm Jenny one of the recovery workers here at STEP hi everyone uh, my name is Mark and I'm one of the facilitators here at STEP um, I'll be running through one of the slides later on and hi I'm Steve Steve Moore, another uh, facilitator here at STEP, and I shall be doing some slides also. Lovely. Yeah, thanks, everyone. So um, if you're not so familiar with STEP, um, I'm just going to briefly outline what we do. Um, we're an educational service and uh, we run a range of courses uh, to help people learn uh, ways of looking after mental health and, um, and emotional well-being as well. So um, I'm just going to briefly show you the, uh, what courses we're offering at the moment. So um, we've got one we call hashtag step forward. Uh, this is specifically for 16 to 25 year olds who, who struggle with their mental health. Um, we've got a bipolar self-management, um, which really sort of goes into a lot of detailed coping strategies uh, for managing mood. Um, we run a re recovery education programme or REP, um, and this helps people who have perhaps already attended a course to build on the coping strategies that they've learned and take more control over their recovery. Um, now, um, a new one that we've developed and soon to start actually is um, insomnia understanding. And um, we're looking at possible causes and developing strategies. And uh, one of them that we've been running very regularly, and we've already run four of these courses already during the lockdown, is the Understanding Borderline Personality Disorder course. Um, and this really sort of explores experiences that's associated with personality disorder um, and helps people sort of discover ways to manage these. And alongside that course, um, we run a family and friends course as well, um, so that uh, family and friends can understand what their loved one is, is going through more easily. And just say, we've got a new course that we're just starting to take referrals for, care as well-being. Um, again, it's all about um, improving mental and physical well-being, um, and we're hoping to run that in the new year. So you can see we do um, a real range of courses, and we just really want to enable people to improve them, their own mental health a lot more easily. So um, just to say that, you know, before COVID came, um, we ran everything face to face and we had a classroom where we used to deliver these courses. Um, we were based in the city centre uh, in a building called The Circle. And we had an office, we had a training room and uh, a room that we did enrolments in. So um, when COVID struck, um, The Circle closed down, um, everything, uh, courses and referrals uh, were all put on hold. Um, we were all issued with laptops uh, so we could work from home, as I'm sure that many of you are doing right now as well. Now, um, we had a very short period where we assisted the single point of access team, um, but it became apparent that we weren't going to go back to the circle and the decision was made to develop the service to run online. And so really this forced us into an area um, of teaching that we'd never done before. And, uh, you know, as a team, uh, we did have a few mixed reactions um, to the challenges. <laughs> so um, personally, I felt that it was a bit scary uh, but exciting um, you know it's, it's it's been a time where we've learned a lot um, and we're still learning we're still adapting um, but you know it, it's not a direction that we're going to regret because you know in today's society um, with access to technology um, step needed to be more up to date um, with an online presence you know we needed to move away a little from just face-to-face -face teaching um, you know which could limit access to, to some people, um, say someone who has mobility issues, for example, um, or those people that aren't so comfortable um, in a physical group setting. So, yeah, we're also aware um, that online working has its limitations, um, but we've learned it has so many benefits as well. Um, and we want to continue those benefits uh, when we're back at the circle, hopefully. Um, and we want to try a more blended approach to, to support offering face face to face and online interventions so it can be a lot more flexible to what people uh, need. 
So we're um, just thinking, uh, what did we do um, in response to COVID then? So first of all, we just we just started observing other people doing online courses. So we observed um, IAPT and uh, we just got ideas and saw how uh, their participants were engaging. Um, we started to redesign the service. We redeveloped all of the course content, um, the sessions plans, workbooks, uh, presentations, you know, everything was redeveloped, which it still is. <laughs> and something that was really useful is um, we found a free online course uh, via the Open University, Open Learn. It was called Taking Your Teaching Online, um, and all of the facilitators took it. Um, it was an eight-week course, a couple of hours a week, but you could access it at any time, and it didn't have to take two hours. You could do it quicker. Depends what you were focusing on. Not all of it was relevant to the service, but it was a great start in giving us more ideas um, and it also gave us the confidence that uh, this could be a success. Now, um, something else we did was we taught ourselves how to make PowerPoint more interesting <laughs> unbelievably um, and we did a lot of it by watching YouTube tutorials and um, there really is a tutorial for everything on, on YouTube um, and all you need is, is, is an open mind and a bit of imagination as well and we also sometimes frustratingly maybe always frustratingly uh, discovered how Microsoft Teams can function as a platform uh, to develop courses from um, and we did perhaps a lot of experimentation uh, you know as a team to find things out you know so it was really um, a real learning uh, steep learning curve so um, our recommendations do relate to using Microsoft Teams to develop our courses via PowerPoint so this this is what we operate in um, on a day-to-day -day basis so just sort of moving on to our next slide um, as a team um, we we've thought about you know exactly how to group the themes of, of, of what we learned and um, we think there's about three key themes um, you know we've, we've worked out what's worked well for us and not so well as well um, I just want to say as well um, towards the end we've got some time for questions so we're about 10 minutes so if anything occurs to you as we're going along uh, just jot it down and that will be fine so um, let's look at technology then and what we've learned um, so let's have a look so firstly, checking your own technology, asking the participants of your courses to check theirs. Um, so we also take online enrolments uh, using Attend Anywhere and we send people full instructions of how to join, uh, how to log in and how to join the appointment. Um, and so with these courses that we run as well, we email our participants a link uh, to join the course two days before and we ask them to check that they can access it and they ask them to contact us if they have any problems as well. So, you know, checking is really important. All right. And then you're not suddenly faced with an IT um, issue that you can't handle because we're not IT experts either. Now, um, turning off microphones and cameras, as you probably might have done just now for this session. Um, so especially we found if it's a large group, um, it's, you get a better connectivity to the session, um, especially if you're perhaps playing videos, something like that. It just seems to be uh, more improved. Um, we do use the chat function. Um, you know, you're probably aware of that as well. And, um, and we also use the hands up signal um, if people want to add a verbal comment. Um, and we just find that this reduces interruptions and it improves the flow of your session, really. Um, and that's important in, in an online setting. Now, um, next little point is to have a backup plan, <laughs> maybe a couple, really. If, if, uh, if your technology uh, fails on you. So um, right now for our session, I'm hosting the PowerPoint slides, um, but Steve and Mark both have copies of the PowerPoint. And if I sort of had a problem, they could immediately bring up uh, the presentation and uh, there'd just be a couple of moments of, um, you know, worry. <laughs> and, uh, and then we would be Funny. back on again. Panic, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's why you have a plan B. And um, yeah, just 
thinking about the next point as well. So environment, and I'm sure you're all really kind of aware of this yourself with, with things that are around you or people that are around you. Um, now, try not to be in a distracting environment. And so that could be your setting, your own background. Um, you know, we, we've had chats about using different backgrounds and we most of us go for our home background anyway. Uh, but if there's any personal photos or something that might be a bit controversial uh, in the background that might distract people or offend people, then, you know, you could always blur the background or use one of these settings in Microsoft Teams to pop yourself up something that's different um, and not, uh, you know, not, not offensive. That's the best result, really. Um, talking about perhaps background noise as well. Um, some things you just can't control. Um, now, if you use a headset, um, you know, if you, you've got a headset, then that's very, very useful because um, it cuts out uh, a lot of background noise that people can hear um, that, that you're delivering to. Um, and also, you know, it makes you less distracted as well uh, when you've got this thing in your ear uh, and uh, you can, that's all you can hear. So um, being aware of the environment is, you know, quite uh, in, uh, important as well. So, um, yeah, and I've already mentioned this really about adapting materials, um, you know, the Open University course, anyone can go on, you know, you can look it up for yourself and get some ideas and um, you know, not all of it's going to be relevant for your service, um, but, you know, there's some key areas in it that are really good um, to, to think about, say, when you're teaching online, things like quizzes, uh, videos, uh, visual tools, you know, activities, um, you know, that can be engaging online uh, when you've not, you know, you haven't got that sort of physical presence uh, that you normally would have in a classroom yeah so um you know in some situations and it depends on where you're coming from uh black and white information is appropriate you know perhaps if you're delivering a more clinical presentation um but in our step courses, we've always tried to make them uh, very interesting and engaging. And so that's what we've tried to transmit um, as well with our online stuff. So colors, you know, pictures, um, you know, you don't have to be, um, uh, you don't have to win prizes for art, but, um, but just to really know, you know, what you want to put across and how you might do it, um, you know, in, in, in an engaging way. You know, I mean, we never used PowerPoint before, did we? <laughs> and, uh, and it would be uh, really it's been a really steep learning curve with us so um we also um you know found that um that people uh, well what we were really worried about um you know was that people wouldn't want to engage you know very very easily they'd just be sitting there uh, you know and it's so hard to know what their reactions are because you can't see any body language but um we we found that using our chat function um was a really key tool um people use it to comment they ask questions they share things they validate each other and they offer ideas and we found it you know we were so relieved uh, when comments started coming through um and we realized that this you know was still a good platform for people to interact with and we have had comments saying that people feel more confident um, typing into the chat because people can't see them you know it's a bit more anonymous and uh, and so therefore it's encouraged them to participate whereas they probably wouldn't have done in a classroom so it's um, yet yeah, it's been really useful now um powerpoint <laughs> is uh, it's got a lot of different sort of tools within it that help presenters so um say you might already know this um but presenter view is really useful to us um so presenter view allows you to see um the slide that you're on um it allows you to see the next slide um, and it allows you to see any notes that you've written about the current slide so it's a 
useful prompt, um, you know, when you're suddenly on the spot, because um, however much you do it, um, this kind of uh, facilitation, it's still a bit sort of odd just sitting talking to the computer uh, and you might have that moment where your brain goes blank. So, um, so yeah, so there's lots of useful tools there and um, yeah, all around technology and presentation, but um, we're going to like move on now. I'm going to hand you over to Mark and he's going to look at the next theme um, for our, uh, our talk. Thanks very much, Jenny. Hello, everyone. Um, so the next theme that we're going to discuss today is uh, regarding uh, ideas around setting boundaries, uh, pre-course planning. So this is just a list of um, some reflections and some ideas um, to be thinking about uh, with regards to these themes. So initially we're, we're, we're talking about putting together a set of group ground rules or mutual expectations and sticking to them. So it's initially before we're kind of thinking about the content of planning the course, it's, uh, it's providing a framework uh, for people who are going to attend in terms of trying to, I guess, address any sort of presumptions or assumptions uh, about, you know, what the course is going to entail and how attendees, um, you know, what, how they're going to sort of conduct themselves within that. And, you know, I guess for lots of different forums as well as just an online course, this, uh, you know, this is an important issue to, to, to think about prior to, to, uh, to run a session, uh, but still equals important online um, that we, you know, we ensure that where that people are aware of of what they're going to go into because um you know people are going to come into our session you know with sometimes they're kind of like with a, with a real sort of um you know they, they might have to kind of expose a little bit more vulnerability for example uh which is an issue that we need to ensure that people are going to feel sort of safe uh, and, and secure and able to, to do that and, and, and the best way we can do that is to ensure that we've discussed boundaries and, and the case has been that prior to, to the pandemic that um, that was always part of our process and before anyone comes to uh, any of our courses that we'll have seen everyone beforehand and discussed these issues with them. Uh, the next thing to consider as well, what what, we, what we've kind of been been thinking about as well is 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 during the session. Um, obviously, when when you're online, when we're going through uh, Microsoft Teams, um, all of all of those facilitators there are are you know are always kind of engaged in that process uh, of being immediate with with the attendees that are online. So. Um, so we kind of thought as well that it's always handy as well as kind of like sometimes if we've got sort of backup documents when things go wrong, but also in terms of communication that to think of some way that we can still sort of keep in communication with facilitators without having to go through Microsoft Teams. Um, so, you know, sometimes we will currently use uh, like the WhatsApp application um, that can that can just be kind of like an added sort of backup channel for any sort of like communication that we, that we might need to do uh, if there's any sort of technical issues or any issues with attendees um, that we might need to sort of ref reflect immediately reflect on um, and try and address in some way um, but that might be difficult if we're you know if we're still at that time facilitating the session so you know we can sometimes maybe just it, you know, if, if we're not immediately engaged with that session, we can just message the other facilitators, make, the, make them aware of any situation or suggest ways that we can deal with it. Have you got that, Mark? Yeah, sorry, Jenny, it was just a little bit slow coming through there. <laughs> oh, sorry, satellite delay. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so setting clear roles for each facilitator. So again, um, this is in regards to pre-course planning. Um, so it, it's just making sure that, um, you know, 
generally we have we tend to have kind of at least a mi minimum of two facilitators um to attend to each session um i mean that's just kind of in general, a, practic a practical thing in, in order to ensure that there's someone who's going to actually manually move along each slide that we use, as in this case, um, to indicate sessions, and also that it's helpful for someone else to be aware of any discussions within the chat function in Microsoft Teams and that they can then uh, moderate and, and monitor anything on there as well, because um, if you are engaged in actually sort of going, being responsible for the slides, you can't actually see the chat function. Um, so it's about making sure that people have got an understanding prior to the session that they know what their role is. It might also involve uh, as well the idea of, you know, depending on the number of slides that you might be using for the session about allocating particular people to be the lead on each particular slide as well, um, you know, and and kind of like just making sure that you're kind of like clear in that respect as well. So um, it's always good to have some kind of roles in terms of who's going to do what. Considering factors such as timing and breaks. So um, again, it's that it's just that that kind of I, I think it's kind of a little bit um, linked to sort of boundaries as well. It's kind of clear communication with attendees. So as well as kind of informing, informing them about how, um, you know, to log into the group and so on. Also got to be clear with them about, you know, how long we're expecting them to, to log on for, because, you know, obviously they might be kind of like uh, build, building their time uh, around the session. So if we say that we're just going to be online for an hour and a half, then we need to end, try and ensure as best as we can that we can do that session, um, you know, in between that time, and so that people may get the full benefit of that session. And also, the thing about a break is is really important as well to try and think about maybe, you know, a rough idea when you might be wanting to introduce a break. Um, and also f for facilitators, it's also kind of like a good time to maybe regroup and sort of reflect on the session, how it's going so far and to plan any sort of ideas or interventions that you might need for maybe the second part of the session. Uh, I mean, it, specifically within our, with our online course, we do ask attendees to actually log out for that break period. Um, so, you know, we're, we're able to do that with some sense of confidentiality. Uh, and then for people to sort of like log in um, shortly afterwards, after us, when we're, when we're ready to resume the second part of the session. Um, having some kind of clear objectives for the session as well. So it's it's about um, sort of being familiar with the material that you might have, you know, be responsible for in terms of the slide. Um, just having a kind of like some kind of idea about not only what you're saying, but also why you're say, saying it, you know, kind of maybe just to have some kind of comp put into sort of context. Um, just in case, in case, in, unless anything sort of like comes up in chat, so you, you're able to, you know, kind of expand on that particular idea or issue that you might be talking about. Um, but also, you know, try and, and as, as you can. Um, I mean, as, as Jenny was saying before, I mean, this is still kind of still kind of a, a fairly new environment for us, and we're still sort of like learning all the time and. You know, there are times where we might we might find ourselves maybe a little bit off track, maybe get a little bit of brain freeze from time to time. But it's just trying to just have that thing in the back of your mind of just, you know, sort of keeping to task, really. Asking for feedback, evaluating, learning from it. Again, um, this, you know, this can be more than just thinking about online, but just like, a, you know, really important um area anyway for whatever forum it is um i mean it's especially important in this particular case you know in in terms of ourselves trying to create some uh, a forum and content to for our for our courses onto onto a more online forum it has partly initially been sort of like one of you know um 
assumptions uh, and sort of um, trying out what we sort of think, you know, think might be best for it. But obviously over time, we're, we're, we're constantly gathering feedback um, and evaluations, talking to attendees, uh, as we always have done, um, because all our courses are all, you know, constantly being updated, um, rarely sort of set in stone. We're always willing to adapt them to take on board what people say in terms of content or the way that we're delivering things. That's equally been just as important in terms of the online forum as well. Uh, and, um, you know, hopefully we'll get a bit later on in this session, we're going to share some of the feedback that we've had so far. Ah, there it is. Sorry, it was, it was coming in a little bit slowly again there. But finally, on, on to the idea of practice. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess this is just, see, for me, just, it, it's is just... Is that frozen, Mark? It, it's fine, yeah. It's, it's, lost it's, come on now, uh, Steve. But practice, um, yeah, equally important as, as everything else that I've been talking about. You know, I know sometimes... The present situation you know we're all kind of pushed for time um but if you can if you can make sure that you've of course planning in terms of boundaries uh roles etc if you can also find the time to actually sort of make it, do a run through it you know because sometimes it can seem like it might be a sort of like a bit of a script that you might need to memorize to be clear and concise uh, but if you can really find the time for everyone involved to get together then I really recommend just sort of like, you know, going through it as best you can and practicing it as often as you can. And it, it really seems to sort of pay off, um, it, you know, if you can if you can find the time to do that. Um, so that's that's the kind of the, the the sort of reflections that we've had in terms of setting boundaries and uh, pre-course pre planning. Um, so that's it for me. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pass on to my colleague, uh, Steve. Hello, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for that, Mark. Um, I will continue with the third part of this uh, talk on um, online with a look at um, the way we deliver the course and the style that we might use as presenting it, in terms of presenting it. Because um, it's very, very different um, presenting a course online to presenting it in a classroom. I personally like to be able to pace around in front of a group and throw questions to them and use a flip chart or a whiteboard as a as a prop um, and all that's gone. Um, and here we are, virtual TV presenters. Um, so it, it's remembering that people can only see your head and shoulders um, and it's very easy for them to misread you or misunderstand you. Um, not only this, um, but we can't see how the participants are responding to what information we're giving them. Um, we don't even know if they've walked away from the camera because <laughs> for the most part, they will be just a, a circle with a couple of initials in um, with their microphones turned off. Um, <clears throat> so key areas to remember really are your body language, um, eye contact, um, something I have a slight problem with is I'm wearing very focals which are now way out of date and I can only actually see through the bottoms so uh, it, it makes it look like I'm looking down all the time because um, I've got my head tilted back that's just so that I can actually focus on the screen um, facial expressions of course um, if you if you're pulling a face without realizing it somebody might think you're uh, you're not you're not um, believing what you're saying or whatever they might pick up on that um how you respond verbally to um to perhaps the chat that's that might be going on um we need to be mindful of all of these things because um people will pick up on them more than you think um and and if you're sitting there with your arms folded and breathing heavily which can come across like huffing on the microphone um it, it just doesn't give a great impression um <clears throat> another um, major factor when delivering online is, of course, how we validate people. 
um, some the, the first course we ran, we were well, the first rep course we ran, we were very surprised at the speed with which the chat function started to hit us. Um, it was an incredibly engaging group and the, the chat just moved at, at, at 100 mile an hour seemingly and, and keeping up with it and finding places where we could uh, interject with the, the right comment, say the right thing. Um, was, it wasn't easy. So this is why it is good to have somebody um, dedicated to the chat function itself. Um, so, you know, people will contribute their experiences, their feelings, their thoughts and opinions, and, and it's good that we let them know that they've been understood and acknowledged, um, which we'll look at this in this slide. Um, Emphasising self-care is important from the outset. Um, letting people realise, you know, that they're going to be talking about stuff that they might have not talked about for a long time. Um, it, it, most of, most people are going to be accessing this from their own home, which is their safe space. Now, when we deliver a course at the circle, um, people can always leave the room if if they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. We all, we always say it's not school. You know, you can get up and go out and have a breather. And at the end of the session, they can go home to their safe space and uh, and, and take stock. But here we are delivering the course directly into people's safe space, and we need to be aware of that. So we emphasise their self-care um, and to look after themselves uh, all the time. We put it in the ground rules. We, um, we, we bring it up at enrolment when people first come to us. Um, and we also include it as part of a check-in at the beginning of each session um, where we get them to start to identify with the way that they are feeling um, and be able to describe it. And we do that with a, with a whole, some, certainly in the rep course, we do that with a whole series of, sort of fairly, fairly fun slides in, in terms of people being able to rate their, rate their feelings of the moment against a colour chart or a weather check-in or, or even a, a, a style of music. Um, uh, and and you know, it, it, it's, people are finding it very useful. Um, but we want people to feel safe, feel validated, and one help, one thing we do is just help them practice self-validation and a bit of mindfulness. Um, looking directly into the camera is important um, when facilitating and answering questions. Um, trying not to look at your own video image, that is difficult, you know, because it's you're always down there and uh, it's like looking in a mirror, isn't it? You kind of... <laughs> um, it, it, but it's hard to portray empathy uh, when you're online, so this shows that you're listening and uh, you, you people are saying and putting putting into the chat, and and it validates them. Um, also, you can encourage validation from the participants to one another, which is when that starts going well. It, it's nice to be able to watch that. Try to relax. Um, just be as natural as you can. Be yourself. Bring your personality into the session. Um, people like you to be relatable and down to earth rather than just reading a script and being a bit robotic. Um, we are talking about serious and complex issues and experiences, uh, but it's important to be you because people will feed off your demeanour and manner. Um, so it's best to just have, have fun with the group and enjoy it. Planning time to answer questions, yeah. Um, we offer 15 minutes after the session has finished where we will be around for anybody who wants to sit and stay with the group and perhaps ask something on a on a one-to-one -one basis that bothered them in, within the session, something that they might want to, want to discuss, uh, that they, they couldn't get into the chat. Um, and we offer the chance for them to be able to turn their cameras and microphones on at this point, so they make it a bit more personal. Mm -hmm. um, and we put this slide into the PowerPoint to tell them this. Um, um, and it also kind of iterates, if you like, what we will cover and what we won't cover um, so that nobody is left disappointed. It, it is hard 
trying to avoid sometimes being drawn into individual situations where people start to overshare. Um, and this can happen in the chat as well as in a live um, setting in a classroom. Um, but if you've got your boundaries well set um, and people know that they have signed up to a group of ground rules where they know that they're not supposed to overshare, then you can you, you can stop it fairly quickly and move the conversation on um, without being too harsh. Uh, and people do get it. Um, we, we do try and validate them, um, but then we'll refocus back onto the topic. Um, it's, it's, it's just finding that balance between validating the individual and the whole group. Um, of course, as facilitators, you don't want to be talking over one another. With the technology, it's um, one of the things that we'll, that you've probably all noticed by now when you're on either a Zoom or a, or a um, Attend Anywhere or a Microsoft Teams. The minute one person starts to talk over another, it'll cut a microphone off and then it all becomes very confusing because people don't know whether what they've just said has been heard. So we, we try and we try and use um, natural gaps and pauses if there's something that we desperately want to bring into a conversation that perhaps a colleague's forgotten to mention or you might want to be able to say that uh, somebody's got their hand up. Um, there is a, ha a very, very useful hand up function on um, Microsoft Teams, which I believe isn't on Zoom, um, which when you when clicked allows us to see uh, who wants to speak, who can then turn their microphone on. The, the person actually changing the slides won't be able to see this in presenter view, but, um, but this is where you might want to come in and say, oh, so-and-so's got their hand up, they just want to make a point on something. Um, <clears throat> And finally, uh, try not to wing it. <laughs> um, people do tend to know if you're doing this because um, you will you will waffle incoherently at certain points. You'll go off topic, um, and it's hard to bring yourself back on topic if if you haven't planned it. Um, be honest if you don't know something. Um, we're, you're forever going to get questions thrown at you that might be quite tough and you think, oh, crikey, <laughs> how do I answer that? Um, if that's the first thing that comes in your head, just be honest with people and say, actually, I, I don't know the answer to that, um, but I will find out for you and I'll bring it back next session or in the next half of the session. Um, so practice with colleagues and don't leave anyone struggling. You know, if you see one of your colleagues losing track and that brain freeze coming on, you can jump in and um, perhaps just add a comment that brings them back on track. OK, so um, the next thing we're going to do. I think is a little bit of exercise now, now that we've been talking for a while, let's um, let's get everybody else um, on the chat and see what you can come up with. What we've got here is an example of a piece of text chat that came up um, at the end of a group uh, from one of our participants. Um, I think this week's session has been amazing. I've watched this session with my mum and we found it very positive. So what do people think? What, what, what would people um, do to manage this situation if this occurred on one of your one of your groups or courses or something you were running. Chuck some ideas into the chat now. So let's 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 have some feedback. Ooh, is there a message? Yeah, we've got one reply. <clears throat> yes, it, yes, it is, and uh, we did realise, Carla, straight away that this, 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 what alarmed us straight away at the end of this particular session. The group facilitators came back and went, "Oh, help!" You know, immediately we've had a comment that says that there's been a slight breach of as part of the ground rules. Do you check who else is here? Ah, there we go. Well. This was quite early on in um, in our uh, online group sessions, and 
I suppose it was something that we we hadn't considered at the time. That's something we do during the therapy, checking the alone before commencing. Yes. Uh, well, it's something we realised we had to do pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Anybody else? What would you do? What would you do if it's already been done? <laughs> if <there's... laughs> oh, they're a quiet lot here. <laughs> I think they I think they've fairly, fairly, fairly well grasped that the issue, haven't they? Did any other participants say anything about this? Uh, I I don't I don't believe they did, Lee. Did they most you know? Um I don't think they did, no. No. No, but I mean, we did realise fairly quickly that there were that this needed addressing. So we'll have a look at what we did. So we called her straight after the session. To remind her of the confidentiality clause, um, but we also, you know, at the same time, validated and, and, and acknowledged her and her mum's positivity about the course. Um, yeah, so validate the fact that they found the session helpful, and then talk with them about importance of confidentiality. Absolutely. So that's yeah, what we did. That's what we did straight up. away. But then, as a group, we had we had to sit down and um, discuss in a meeting what we were going to do. Um, we did offer her advice on how her mum could be supported by re being being referred herself for the course um, or perhaps attending the family and friends course. We also then went on within uh, as a group to as, as a team to add the issue of attending alone uh, to maintain confidentiality in the group ground rules and at the enrolment within the what we call the step minimum expectations that we get everybody to sign and it's something now that enrollers talk about right from the word go uh, that when you come to a group you must attend alone um, because obviously it's a breach of confidentiality if your mum or your partner or your mate sat there yeah So I think I think people generally have got like a, a grasp of the issue we were struggling with. And the last, is there a, is there another one there? Yep. I'll, I'll put the last one in, but maybe there's a delay again. Oh, I think there's a delay on what I'm getting. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I read it? No, you're all right. Yes, uh, and obviously. Finally, we updated the pre-course uh, email which people have sent outlining how to access the court course and what to expect while we're doing it. So um, it, it, everything that we bring in new, we, we back it up in triplicate, basically. Mm. Uh, yes, so, uh, as it, Jenny just said, not, not just an issue on teaching sessions. All staff need to be aware of some staff are working from home and have another person also working from home. Applies to supervisors, calls, etc. Yes, it does. Yes. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. And I think was it was it Jenny who was asking about who who do we check um, in terms of uh, who else is attending? Um, I guess we have we have a, we have like a list of people who we invite, and and we check that about for people on the session that log in because they go straight into a lobby initially. So we only we only admit the names. That we presume are, are, are logging on. Um, so, in that in that respect, we, we stick to the list that we've sent out to for invite in terms of allowing people. Um, but yeah, but this but this other issues has cropped up, and um, as it sometimes does, and 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 this was the way that that, that we felt we'd we try and address that. So, but we do check people, uh, Jenny, that do um, are actually coming in who. Are, who are who are kind of like registered for the course and the session. Any more comments, Mark, on that one? From um, yeah, no, I think um yeah, I think people have, have just kind of acknowledged that and um 
and and sort of echoed um, sort of similar uh, recommendations. So yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for everybody for your contributions. Yeah, so you can probably see now I've brought up um, a slide with some feedback on that we've got um, from people who've attended the courses online so far. Um, and I've just kind of selected these comments because um, it was something that, you know, STEP were concerned about, um, that we would lose the group support aspect um, of our courses, um, which, which people had really kind of blossomed with while they had attended a, um, a classroom based course. So you, you've probably had to read down these comments and you know they're, they're absolutely fantastic really. Um, and there's more of them as well. I've just selected these ones that I thought were really kind of meaningful um you know and, and it helped put our minds at rest as well that um we could still offer a course that was supported for people um in in a group way even though they are all you know on their own in their own homes or wherever they're accessing it um there's one other feedback slide that i want to share with you as well and um you know there wasn't um, a specific question on our, our survey um, that we asked people to fill in about, you know, what is the benefit for you to do an online course? These comments about online sort of accessibility came out just in general. And um, something that's really interesting to notice as well is that um, these comments are from people who'd all been referred prior to the lockdown and fully expected to attend a face to face course. And so, you know, they perhaps had some resistance to changing what their, you know, what should have happened. Um, and so these, these, you know, it shows you a really nice range of reasons. You know, there's no need for childcare. Um, there's less anxiety, um, less travel time, no travel time, um, and something that's, you know, for, for someone anyway, quite easily accessible via the teams. So, um, and we found that, you know, in general, uh, that it has been accessible for people technology wise as well. So, um, you know, those two fears of ours that doing an online course you know wouldn't be wouldn't be fun wouldn't be interesting wouldn't have that group support you know they've really been sort of allayed there um and you know maybe some of you as well you've already got experience doing this and and uh, you know i can say that it's it's really encouraging isn't it you know uh that uh, that we can operate this way at this moment you know that because we have to really so um it's having some really good um benefits for us uh, as a service so, um, so just going to move on now to our final slide, um, which is our question time. Um, so, you know, feel free to uh, type into the chat or, you know, speak verbally um, if you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to unshare my screen now, uh, so I'll hopefully be able to see some people now as well. So, um, so yeah, question time. Yeah, uh, and th thanks for uh, logging in, everybody. It's um... It's been good to uh, share our reflections with you all. Lee's got his hand up. Yeah. Remember to turn your mics on if you'd like to say something. <laughs> <laughs> so the questions um, about the course, yes, it's totally free. Um, we we just discovered it ourselves um, just, just because... <sighs> We wanted to find some kind of guidelines, to be honest, and not just set out there into uncharted territory without any guidance. Um, so, yeah, go on to Open Learn, um, and the course is called Take Your Teaching Online, or Taking Your Teaching Online, something like that. And you do have to watch it with, um, with like a sort of selective focus uh, depending on what you know is going to be right for your service um, and 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 you don't have to do all of it either there's some parts that you could just skip through um, like the quizzes <laughs> but uh, the quizzes are fun as well <laughs> as long as you don't take them too seriously <laughs> anyway yeah um, right yeah any anyway. Lee did you Lee did you have a question sorry Lee Lee your microphone's off I'm at I'm having a nightmare with IT, um, which I guess it shows what challenge this can be. Um, an observation more than anything. Do you know, you, t you talked about um, practice and the importance of not winging it and everything. Just an observation that I've noticed. Actually, you three have 
have obviously evolved and become so comfortable at doing this because it's just such as a participant observing you doing this you're just so relaxed at doing it and i suspect that's come over time um, wow. that's at the start the first the first rep that i did i felt internally very nervous but I, I think I do tend to come across fairly relaxed. I think Mark always comes across relaxed. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think all of us I, we're just we just try and be ourselves and have done from the, from the outset. But at the same time, we you know we have practiced this before we've done it. We have, so yeah, you, where we were times. handing over, it, mm -hmm. it, the trick is not to make it look so practiced. <laughs> Keep a bit of naturalness in there, so it looks like. We just do it. <laughs> it's also just going to um, come on the point. Do you know when you said shared the feedback about people feeling less anxious about yeah. the process and stuff like that? Because um, from what I've been involved in, what seemed to have is come out of this is better attendance at the courses as well. Have you found that's continued? Very much, yes. Um, I think certainly continued with the BPD course, hasn't it, Mark? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very consistent. Um, and yeah. the rep group, I think, is pretty consistent. Um, oh, yeah, I know. There was there was someone who um, made her apologies. She couldn't attend, but was, was really keen to attend the next one. But she just had a baby, so I suppose we'd, <laughs> we could let her off with that. <laughs> I'm surprised she's attending the next one, to be honest. <laughs> I am. We'll see you tomorrow, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. So, so when we return, sorry, I'm, I've got loads of questions. Um, <laughs> no, carry on. So, so when we go to, when we return to some normality, when you can put on face-to-face -face, mm. um, sessions, do you think this online offer will make part of, of your offer? I think it will have to, to be honest. I, I can't see all this work just going to waste afterwards. I think um, the fact the courses are now here, they're prepped, they're, we know what we're doing with them. I think we can offer an online version or a face-to-face. -face. Um, yes, I, I agree, Stephen. It, it's it's hopefully just an, another another option, isn't it? And you know that we can still offer a service to people, and that's got to be a good thing. It might be that we get more people opting for the online than we get coming to the classroom. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I guess one of my one of my presumptions about the online course was a lack of interaction within a group and a sense of supporting one another, the applicant, the uh, the attendees that come in, um, and and I think that was one of the reasons why we initially uh, kind of um, we we left sort of fifteen minutes for for some discussion afterwards in case there were things that they'd not picked up on but it seems to be the case that the chat function has been equally effective in ensuring that that still kind of exists and that people still get that sense of communication or discussion or reflection with regards to uh, issues in the course um it, it's still been just as effective really so that was kind of um yeah that that's been quite an eye-opener for myself I think well I think within, within about four sessions of the previous rep group they decided amongst themselves the attendees that they were going to set up their own whatsapp group which they did and I hope that's going well for them you know anybody else um I think there was a question about uh, I, might, I might have missed it because they were coming in about using Zoom. Uh, people have more access to Zoom on their phones rather than Microsoft Teams. Any issues in terms of access? Um, I guess just, just quicker, we, we've had the odd technical issue with Microsoft Teams about the chat function for some people, and sometimes that can be through the device that they're using um, if they choose to use a, a, a mobile phone rather than uh, you know, a laptop, um, but there's also always the option that we can open up the audio if people still want to discuss if they have difficulty with, with, with that. Um, and yeah, we, obviously we'd, we've just gone through MS Teams because that's the prefer preferred sort of trust platform at present. So yeah. 
We've got a question about and, uh, actors in the online BPD group um, and really that's um, for a referral to be made uh, by the GP or, or mental health worker um, and you know that that's how you can get referred um, by it. I think you have to um, identify with about five traits of, of BPD out of the official nine is that right? Um, right? I, I'm not I don't, I'm not sure how strict it is i think if people identify as emotionally sensitive or emotional yeah. sensitivity then then it, they can come to the course it's not yeah. one that you need you don't need a diagnosis for it no um, but you do need a referral so that would have to come from your gp can do it with a letter um or or use the online gp referral system that we've got or um a spa worker or or somebody else from one of the other mental health teams yeah um and as the we're on the internet website as well for further information yeah. uh with regards to the service and the courses uh find us under s i think <laughs> hope so <That's> step. <laughs> so yeah by all means go and check that out uh let's just but uh, carl has put would it be helpful to be flexible with entry i'm not quite sure well, that's in well, well I imagine people have often asked, can we self-refer? And uh, no, it's not possible. I'm not. Is it to do with? I'm not sure. It might be something to do with the council. Um, we can go. Rules, we can go rules back. And regulations. So, yeah. Thanks for your, thanks for your comment, Heather. Um, about as sort of. Yeah, spending some time upskilling and, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely been a challenge, but quite rewarding. Actually. Has it? <laughs> oh, just learned so much, haven't it's we? It's still a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> we're still but developing, we, aren't we? We, we, we are developing. We, we, and we, we, we do tend to, we, we found which, which members of the team have which skills and, and we tend to bounce off of each other quite well. So, uh, yeah. Um, and Jenny's she's also very, asked... Um, have you been looking at impact of courses versus how it was with face to face so again within that we've been revising our feedback as well haven't we jenny and making that more uh digital maybe that's right and um, we use qualtrics um to collect like feedback from people um and so we've got like a generic survey that we've developed um that we ask people to to complete um by clicking the link um at the end of a course um and we've got you know we we used to do um obviously a paper version of a well-being survey that we'd ask people to take like every other week um but we've translated that into a Qualtrics survey as well um, and it makes it really quick and really efficient um, just to do just like instantly um, there are some sometimes some issues around people just not completing them um, but we're just trying to make it easier for them to do it and kind of reinforcing why we want them to do it as well sort of linking it with our funding things like that the, the guilt trip <laughs> but um, but yeah so so that's that's kind of a continuing learning experience. Um, now, looking at the impact of the courses sort of versus how it was face to face. Um, now, we are looking at that. Um, and the big sort of standout thing is the attendance. It seems to be more consistent online. I mean, it's still like, you know, ongoing, which is uh, because we haven't done all of our courses online yet. We haven't conducted them online, even though they're ready. Um, we'll be in a better position to judge um, like, uh, next year I think once we've got some more data um, but uh, yeah but really it's probably our managers above as well that, that are actually doing the, the comparisons because they've got more access to that data that sort of older data but yeah it's, it's, it's really good in that respect yeah those who don't speak English access in the course with difficulty at the moment, <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah, um, we've, we've really tried to kind of open up accessibility in many ways. Um, say, for example, if someone has dyslexia or they're learning in a different way, uh, you know, we try to take these things into account and we learned some useful things on the um, OU course about this um, but that's that is a barrier because we haven't got any other um, speakers on the uh, on, on our team um, so yeah it's, it's a difficult one but uh, yeah 
Sorry, um, no good answer. I think everybody would have to lobby the council for us to get more money in order to be able to expand yeah. the team a little bit. It's it's quite. I mean, we are only quite. We're, there's only eight of us, aren't there, um, in total, and that includes admin so, and managers. <laughs> managers. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we're coming up to our allotted time limit. I don't know, Lee, do you want to conclude things? Oh, no, I don't want to conclude it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just picking up um, on. Somebody, somebody just said, I know IAPT are using interpreters. Yeah, I, I imagine IAPT can probably afford interpreters, but I don't think they would fit our budget, unfortunately. I was um, just going to pick up on Heather's point about whether how's it evaluated against face-to-face, because -face. um because we did the evaluate the COVID evaluation, which looked at people's experience of online within Step, and it kind it came out about 50-50 in terms of people preferring an online course versus preferring face to face. But many people had no real preference. So, so I think that was one of the surprises, um, which is is come out of that. That's right, Lee. And, and those people as well who were surveyed, they were the ones that were referred as well pre-COVID, expecting more face-to-face. -face. So, so it is really encouraging that those results. Anybody else? Oh, sound really compassionate towards yourselves as a team. Yes, we we are, we we are pretty, aren't we? Yeah. yeah it's uh, that's a good question, Kate. Um, yeah, I suppose initially, as as a team, we've kind of supported each other through this challenge, uh, and also we've had a lot of help and support from other agencies. Um, you know, I mean, I like like Lee, for example, has been helping us through this uh, through this situation. I, uh, I know, and obviously, and Gurka yourself has has previously involved in in how we're kind of um, uh, facilitating groups. Um, we've had sort of dialogue with IAPT, um, and it's been helpful to kind of uh, have a look in on their courses. Um, so yeah, I think you know we we have kind of tried to support each other within that, uh, and also just you know make sure that we've we've kind of gathered sort of support and advice uh, from a wider field, which has also been quite helpful. And I think Mark as well, being given the time by our managers right at the start of this to to develop the courses without any other kind of distractions we we held off enrollments for quite a long time that's right we did and, and and we're just allowed to do the open university course take our time with that mm. uh, get skilled up and 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 then we have online a, a, a morning meeting like we would in an office uh, every morning we meet up and we meet up at 4 30 in the evening every day um, and anything that's been a problem can get can get aired and out there and we can support each other with it um, and also the the um, plug of course microsystems which uh, we have every week and and issues can be hammered out as a team and we we tend to get quite a lot of would you say lee we get a lot of work done yeah absolutely <laughs> it's it's a privilege working with you on this um, yeah, I think personally, um, being involved at Armed Land slightly, I think it's it's brilliant how you responded to this. Um, I'm just con just mindful of time, and um, we're just a, a little bit over now. Um, I'd just like to finish just by saying thank you for sharing sharing this. You've obviously put a lot of work and reflections on this, and I just hope that everybody everybody joining has found it equally useful. Um, and I'm sure you'd encourage people to either get in touch via the comments or if um, sure. or outside of here as well. So uh, thank you for me. And shall we draw it to a to a close? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yes. Well, thank you well, very thanks, much. Thanks for joining us, everyone.